Okay, so first and foremost, thank you for allowing me to do this. Uh, it'll probably go, you generally these go about an hour. I know that's a lot of time, but as you'll see, this, this could be a multi-day presentation. Um, so a lot of people, let me, let me just start, start. A lot of people don't fully understand what SEO is these days. Most people have come to SEO because they've read things that worked 10 years ago. Like if you're selling laptops, you could have a website called buylaptops.com and you'd think because laptops is in the URL, it's going to rank higher. doesn't work anymore. doesn't matter if it's called um, ABC3492. You know, that's not a huge, That's I don't think it's a ranking factor at all anymore. Um, also, people think, because it used to work, that, you know, on that same example, you could have Dot content, you know, that said, you know, um, welcome to buy laptops. We sell laptops because you like to buy laptops. And if you want to buy a laptop, contact us because we have the le best laptops to buy. Thank you for coming to buy laptops. The point is you're sprinkling the keyword all over the place and that's supposed to increase your Google search rankings. Doesn't work and you can actually get penalized for that now by trying, by attempting to keyword stuff is what it's called. Um, you know, the Google algorithm is getting so good with, I guess it's called machine learning, AI, deep learning, all that kind of stuff. Um, so you don't want to do that. Also, you know, if you put the keyword specifically in the H1 properly and the H2, you know, this stuff is ridiculous. It doesn't work anymore. Um, you know, if you buy a lot of traffic, um, you know, you'll get, you know, higher in the search results. You'll get penalized for a lot of this stuff. It may work for a month or two, you know, or six months or whatever, but eventually you get penalized. And I've worked with people who get penalized and I've worked with people to get out of a Google penalty and it's horrible and it takes months, sometimes years. So you don't want to do that. So what I like to start off with is explaining what does Google say the top three ranking factors are. Now keep in mind, Google has, I think they've said like over 200 ranking signals, but these are the top three, and this is what we want to focus on, right? Because the Google's the big player here. I mean, there's other search engines, Bing, and uh, of course, um, Yahoo Search and DuckDuckGo and international search engines, but you know, you want to play to this. This is um, what most people play to. So the top, the first one is content. And if any, if you know anything about SEO, this is the huge factor nowadays is content, right? Um, the second one is metadata schema. We will get into all these in more detail. And performance. And you're doing a really, you have one of the top performing websites I've seen in quite a long time. So that's briefly things that you do not want to do. And it's kind of more of a common, I guess it shouldn't say it's common sense because a lot of people have a misunderstanding of the ways to do SEO. So basically keyword stuffing, we've talked about that, going overboard with H1 titles, context spinning, which is basically just rewriting articles and get having content just to have content. You want to actually have content that people search for, get to, and find useful. Um, so the, the, the point of content, we're going to get more deeply into this, is you probably go, why would I want to write a bunch of content? That doesn't help me sell anything. But the theory, and it works, is you have to give people a reason to go to your site and you have to give Google things to index. So if you have a, some good content and you get a hundred views on your content, if you didn't have that content, you wouldn't, that's a hundred less views to your website. The more traffic you have to your website, the more likely your, um, when you're trying to sell something, it will appear in the Google search ranking. So just keep that in mind as I go through all these points. A lot of them may not seem like they have anything to, to do with selling, but the point is you need to draft, drive traffic into, into your site, and that in turn drives drives more uh, traffic to what you're trying to sell. You don't want to duplicate contact or get penalized. You don't want to do any negative SEO. That's makes you, yeah. Um, you don't always PBN. So, you know, that that's bas basically it. Basically, um, things don't work like they used to. And when I say do this, do that, I just need to make it clear. Nobody really knows how Google's algorithm works. I don't even know if there's two people in Google that know how the entire algorithm works. I can, I can, I, I, I can theorize that there's, you know, one person knows 50%, the other person knows 50%, kind of like secret recipes and stuff. That I don't have any evidence of that, but I wouldn't be surprised. So when I do say do this, do that, it's based on experience. It's based on my knowledge of doing this forever. It's, it's based on my knowledge of reading a ton and research and what other people are doing, what re, uh, case studies, reverse engineering. But when I say it, I can't say for certain this is what Google does, but you know, I can only give you what works based on experience. It's kind of a, 
you know, try it out. If it doesn't work, try something out. Try something else out. We went over this. There's no magical solutions anymore. Um, so, like I said, the goal of SEO isn't necessarily to rank higher. I mean, obviously it is. But if we were in a weird world where you, if you ranked higher in Google, you would get less traffic Then you know, obviously you would want to rank lower. So what I'm saying is, of course you want to rank higher, but that's specifically because you want to get more traffic to your website. So that's what you need to focus on. And now the, the best methods obviously are indirect methods. Now there's some, of course, on-page SEO stuff. And I thought I put this in here, but I didn't. So the on-page SEO stuff is structuring your data, is um, making sure your website performs well, things like this, using keywords appropriately in the right places. But I'll, here we go. Yeah, it's on-page and off-page SEO. But it's such off-page SEO is such a thing that most people don't take into consideration. It's the promotion. It's the getting backlinks. And what backlinks are, are links coming into your site from other websites. That's a huge ranking signal, right? Um, so let me briefly say something about backlinks. Ten years ago, you know, people would buy a bunch of backlinks. They'd buy a thousand backlinks for 20 bucks and Google would say, and the, the, the thing was, if Google, the more backlinks you had coming into your website, the more the higher you would rank because Google would think your website was more legitimate. You know, now it takes the authority of the the backlink coming in. So if you have a link from Yahoo or Bloomberg or CNN or Fox News, of course, those are going to be more more legitimate than from, you know, some spammy Russian website. And again, all the if you buy these backlinks and they're spammy, you will get penalized. I shouldn't say you, you might get penalized. You just don't want to do it. It's just a nightmare. And... um yeah, so it takes time, definitely three months. Now, a big problem I have with people that I work with is they, they panic, right? You, it's going to take time. If you do a lot of – there's no way you can do all of these things, right? The best thing I would do is pick – I would start off by doing the, a lot of these fixes that are one time and then moving on to more of the things that you need to continually do, right? And then pick which ones that are – and then test around which ones are working, which not, what's, which ones are not working and kind of – you know, it, it's it's all an A-B test, isn't it? It's all doing what works and not doing what doesn't work or improving on what's not working. So this is a website I run. It's called interestinganswers.com. It's a blog, and I'm just pointing this out because I want to show you. It, it, you can see I'm not a great developer. It's very WordPress temp, template-ish. So don't take any of my development skills, and I don't think we're going to get into that, but my development skills are terrible. But the goal of this website is to answer, like, random questions that aren't really important, right? So the reason I bring this up is that this is where I test all of my things out, right? This is where I test new techniques, new technologies, new strategies to get traffic to my website and make it grow. So the reason I showed you that is because this is a trend graph. This is a really good trend graph for the growth of my website. You can see here after about, what is this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you can see about the seventh month, I started getting a little bit of traffic. Now these right here was when I was testing a lot of stuff. So this isn't valid traffic. I think this was some testing. So this probably was more flat here than I th this. The overwhelming majority of this is legitimate traffic. These were like relatively, you know, viral things. Like on Halloween, I advertised my ha Halloween related posts on Twitter, like the ha Halloween hashtag. There's an article I have on where does Halloween come from. So like on, um, there's a lot of the, uh, the impeachment stuff going on right now. And I'm not taking a political side at all, but I do have a good article on, let me just show you. And I'm showing this because I want to put context to everything that I'm doing, right? So I use these examples over and over again. So impeach. So the article is, can a president that has been impeached run for office again? It doesn't take sides. It just lays it out. Can, can they or can they not? And so with all the trending impeachment stuff going on, I put this. Let me, since I have this up, let me just show you this real quick. I'll give you a good example. So you can imagine there's probably some impeachment hearing hashtag going on right now. And this is this this is rel and I'll show you how this is relevant to you. So they got caught. I think that's probably impeachment related. Yeah. So what I would do, I would first say this is a really good article. I I don't say that it's mine, right? And it is a really good article. So I do this, and I'll get clicks from this, and it'll post a, a lot prettier once it get posts with an image and with the text and stuff like that. And then I'll also find articles that are getting a lot of comments, usually like from mainstream sites. Toothless today, whatever that is, really good read on impeachment. This. And so I'll do three. You don't want to do too much because the thought is I think if you post the same thing, to, that's why I changed the text up a little bit. Uh, I don't know if Google will. Um, 
I don't know if Google will penalize if you put po po if you posted the same link 20 times I think they would probably penalize you so you can see this is how it shows up it looks really really good now this is called Twitter rich cards right and you can make sure you, you don't have this configured you need to have it configured so the point is post it to the hashtag and you know like on a Halloween post if it's Halloween I will post it two or three times a day but uh, you don't want to post it, obviously you don't want to spam things that, that's the bottom line and you do want to pay attention to trends right so we were going to cover that but that I'll just refer back to that comment that I made um, so that's that's off page stuff right trying to drag traffic to your site and so back to the trend chart this is a healthy trend you just want it to be consistent and continuously growing now this is the reality this is the real trend now about <clears throat> let me think probably about June I stopped putting a lot of time into it but you can see it's probably not trend it's probably not going as upward as much but it is still going upward I have no way to prove this, but I'm pretty sure if I, you know, put two hours a day into everything, I think it would have, this is historically the kind of trends that I have when I put a lot of work into something. It peaks up a little more, then it kind of goes exponent, not totally exponential, but it does get more exponential. So the, what I'm, the point of this is, what a lot of people do, they panic, right? So let's say this is early October, so I'm going to zoom in, so you can see here, the traffic from, from my website fall, fell off a cliff. This is probably for a one to two week period. Now, what a lot of people, they see this and they go, what did I do? What did I break? And you can see if you, if you, if you freak out when these cliffs, when these valleys happen, you're going to, you, you could make things worse, right? Let me, let me do one further back. So like, look at this trend right here. You know, you might go after a month and a half, you might go, okay, we need to change anything. But if you're just patient with it, I don't look at, I look at trends over, you know, two to three month periods. So if you looked at it here over a three month period, you could see, okay, it's fine. Then it dips again, but then as long as it's continually going up, that's what you're going to, don't, that's all you're going to worry. So the, the bottom line is don't, don't panic. You're going to hurt. It's kind of like if you get lost in the woods, you just stay in the same place. If you're moving around, it's generally going to be a lot harder for somebody to find you, right? So that's, that's the point of that. Um, and basically the formula I use to, to build traffic to websites is you create content, not just content. To, I saw your blog and it's interesting stuff, but I don't, probably not a lot of people are getting to your website based on the content there. Um, so you create content, you promote it through Twitter, like I just did through advertising, through Facebook, through reaching out to people, and then you deliver it on a fast website and the, the web, the pages need to look consistent. So these are the goal is to drive traffic, to get higher in the rankings, to make sales, right? So that's what we went over. Um, and you want to add content, not, I mean, I don't upsell on my e-commerce sites always, you don't always have to upsell, but generally if there's something you can upsell in a good piece of content you have, you want to do that. And don't focus on writing content to a specific way, you know, to where Google will index it. Focus on the user experience. There are humans that, you know, they're called web evaluators. They go and evaluate what a website looks like. And I think Google said that's not taken into account for rankings, but I can't, why else would they do it? Right. So I'm pretty sure that it is. So if you're, if you're, if you're spamming keywords all over a page, whoever's evaluating your site, they're going to give it a low rating. And I can, I, that has to be a ranking factor, right? It is better generally to have long content and fewer pages generally. And so this is how you get, you're probably like, wow, what, what kind of content do I write about? There's a really good, let me, let me pause real quick. Sorry about that. So if you go to answerthepublic.com. First, let me show you this. If you type in, let's do home. I know you do home automation and um, smart uh, smart home and security cameras. A lot of times I just, for this presentation, I'm usually, I'm using a lot of home automation. Or I can see you're starting to get into home automation. So if you do this, home automation podcast, easy, Baton Rouge, because that's close to where I live. This is called Google Auto Suggest, right? So these, this keyword, these are things related to this keyword that people are typing in. So you kind of know what's what's interesting things to read about. So the reason I bring that up is if you go to answer the public, it uses that auto suggest stuff to come up with things related to the keyword I type in here for things that are people are actually searching about, right? I don't know why it's not okay so let's just do home automation and you get two or three searches a day I believe I mean but you're you would buy this if you're just creating content 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 and you would need to do this 10 or 13 10 or 15 times a day and I'm sure there's other features I don't know I just do this you let it go it usually takes about 10 seconds you can see here it's loading 
So there's 86 questions. So you can see it gives you a circle chart, which is what I call. So these are things related to home automation that you could write about. So let's see. And you could go to the bottom and it's, you know, laid out better. Let's just go here. How to do home automation do it yourself. That's a cool topic. Now you're like, I don't want people to do it themselves. I'm trying to sell it. But you could write a, you know, a blog post on that. Then at the end saying, you know, if you need help doing, if you need help, reach out to us. Or if this seems too complicated, reach out to us. And they may not. They still may do it themselves. But the point is, at least you got traffic to that. And the more traffic you get, again, the higher you're going to show up in the Google search rankings when you're trying to sell your stuff. Of course, that's one ranking signal out of like 200, 300. How much does home automation cost? That would be cool. Like do a breakdown of, you know, like a budget, a mid-tier and a high-tier solution. How to do home automation? How does home automation work? Um what are some examples of open source home home automation? And again, you think <laughs> that may be going against you selling it, but it's an indirect method, which is what I discussed above, right? Um, who is Annika for home automation? So, I mean, this is, it's just, and then you, I mean, what questions do your customers ask you over and over again, right? These are all things. And I guess I have, I know nothing about, I mean, I know, you know, what I see on TV, Simply Safe and, you know, all the stuff and the ADT that you told me is obviously a competitor of yours. So, but your people know what people are asking. So are you getting traffic to your blog? You, and you want to use external links. You know, Google loves external links because if you have a, a website and there's no external links, that's a signal to Google that you're shut off from the community. It rewards websites that are um, – that – have external links. Now you could have external links that go that are like if you review some type of home automation system, link back to Amazon selling that and you get, you know, you'll get some income from that. But I believe Amazon affiliate links are what's called no follow. So you don't get credit for that. But like, let's say you're reviewing a, you know, product X, you could link to product to that product X info page on the, on the manufacturer that sells it. Now you may not want to do that because it may be a competing thing, but whatever, you know what I mean? Just think through that. So what is this? I think this is a sample page that needs to be really, to be deleted. See this page is loading rather slow. So I think if this is sample content, it just needs to be deleted. And even if this was regular content, it's way too short. Google generally, and they say it doesn't matter, but generally all your content needs to be at least 400 words. Generally, if you're, I'll, I'm going to get into that in a little bit. Generally, per, preferably over a thousand words. So these are just some sample ideas I came up with. What do your customers always ask? That's That's not sample content. That's a question to you. People love secrets. They love top 10 lists. They love hacks. So the secrets to home automation or specific products, what are 10 home automation hacks, security system hacks? You could even do what are 10 simply safe hacks, right? <laughs> and then just upsell your product. The, the bottom line, you want to get tra any traffic to your website is better than no traffic. I thought this would be because I just got a camera detector. Do they work? And you could say another one could be why camera detectors don't work on our products. Um, I, you you should do this should say system you definitely could do like si, si, there's all these like home security systems like ring doorbell um do reviews on it you know what i mean and you think that may not help you but you're getting traffic and then at the end you upsell your product right and give reasons why you're better than simply say for the video doorbell and a good example of that well, I'm going to get to it. Now, this would be cool. I know some people are using automation, pot, home automation system based on Raspberry Pi. Do a little DIY, do-it-yourself article on that, right? Best home, okay, yeah, date stuff. Best home automation systems for 2019. People search for this stuff all the time. Of course, I would write it for 2020 and then set a calendar reminder in December of next year to make sure you update this, you know? And then you could link out to the products on Amazon. And then, so you, let's say you wrote one for product X. Go link to the Amazon account, have it be an affiliate for product X. And if they buy it, you get a little bit of money. And then, you know, this goes back to answer the public. So you can go to this blog, which is a smart home blog, and you can get content ide ideas as well there that they're writing about. So the thing is, if they're writing an article and it's 800 words, you generally want to, you can, you don't want to copy and paste, but you can take the article, write your own version of it and increase the word count by about 10 to 20%. Of course, Google doesn't say this is a factor, but it seems to be based on a lot of the research people has done. And so 
you want to focus in ADT, you can just rank for home automation or home security system because they're ADT and they've been around forever. Your website's been around for about three years. I'm going to get to that below. So you really, you have to grow it. So you need to focus on less broad. I hate the word long tail keywords. It's a ridiculous word, but topic. So you can see home automation is very broad. Home automation, Android home automate, and I don't even know what Android, if Android home automation, I saw that it does show up in results, but I don't know if the, if there's like, um, whatever. Android home automation is, is less broad. Android home automation in Texas is even less broad. Android home automation in Houston. I grew up in Houston. So in the Clear Lake area. So I, you know, no, I think Conroe's, I'm pretty sure Conroe is pretty close. And so even less broad than that would be Android home, eh, Android home automation in Conroe. So if I were you, I would get a landing page based on these keywords and set something up. Or, you know, and, uh, home automation for blind people or whatever. So you've, you, you, you basically find out what people are searching on using a, a you could use a, a a plugin like keywords or I'm sorry an extension like keywords everywhere and write landing pages for that if you just have a website for home automation it's going to be very difficult to rank and again not one of these things is going to help you all of these things to a lot of these things are going to help you if you implement a lot of them so the meta description oh I forgot to do have this up screaming frog it's like a website scanner and we're going to get into it Let me get the scan going in the background. Even though your site's not really big, so it only takes like 30 seconds. And we're going to get into all this stuff. So meta keywords is when you search for something in Google, it's that little snippet that appears under the Google search result. You want to write that. If not, Google is going to determine what to put under that. You don't want Google to determine that. You want to write... Okay, I thought it had it. So let's just do um, home automation... And you just want to put natural keywords in here so people and the, these little snippets need to be you know useful to people so they'll click on it you don't want it to say like um indexed or, or you know something that's not relevant so you just want to make sure these are relevant are, are they've google has said that meta descriptions themselves don't make them rank higher but even if they don't rank higher the more in, in, uh, enticing they are the more people you're going that are going to click on them. The more people that click on them, it always goes back to this. The more likely you're going to appear in Google research re search results in the future. And we're going to get to this when we get down to Screaming Frog. Um. So yeah, we don't. What do do? Look at posts that seem to be working. So go to your competitors' posts that have a lot of comments in them, and then just do those and write write some more. Um, and I do about 15 to 20 percent more keywords, but it needs to seem natural, right? And I do, you know, I do. You don't want to keyword stuff, but I do use keywords about 10 to 20 percent more than normal because you know keywords obviously tell Google what it is, but you don't want to. You don't. What needs needs to be natural? I definitely would do a, a, an ebook. There's a reason people. If you go to websites of people selling stuff, they always have not always. A lot of times they are, have a little write that says "Sign up for our free ebook." It's because it works. It gets people on a mailing list. People love free stuff. People love top ten list. Top ten things you know before hiring a hot home automation company. Thirteen tips for using product X. Um, so and, and email lists are still a great, a very good way to market, a great way to market to people. And it builds your brand too, right? If people search for top 10 things to know about home animation, they're going to come to your website. The more they come to your website, the higher you're going to appear in the Google search rankings. Keep that in mind. That's a ongoing theme with everything I'm going to tell you. We went over WordPress is naturally going to build internal links. That's not that big of a deal. Um, but you need to bring the, ex the external links for the reasons I said. Don't plagiarize. Uh, you can go into Grammarly which is a great product, which we'll just briefly get into. I mean, all of these topics are multi-day. A lot of them are multi-day topics. But basically, you don't want to plagiarize. It's common sense, right? But you can just plug your content into Copyscape, and if it detects that it's it's duplicate, it'll tell you. And the reason be Google, Google, the reason this is important is Google checks for this kind of stuff. You can rewrite articles that are you find useful, of course, because every you know. But you do not want to just copy and paste it. So you, even if you reword it around a little bit, put it into um, Copyscape and see if Google thinks or this company, which you know I'm sure Google uses a similar algorithm, algorithm thinks it's duplicate. Now you want to write to like a tenth grader. You don't want to use a bunch of technical words unless you have to to describe the product. You can. It's common sense, right? But if you want to plug your content into here and see what grade level it thinks this is, and of course Google, the, everything I bring up here is because. These are things that'll either either a 
either a, or a ranking signal or will help you get traffic to your website. So this is a so let's say you had a product. This is a good example for a Windows error I was getting on my laptop the other day. Let's say it's Windows error 50, blue screen of death. I found a web page that said, okay, if you try these, step one, step two, step three, if it doesn't work, our product will help you. Now, how that relates to you, I'm thinking, if you could do like tr uh, how to troubleshoot a product X failure. Give step one, step two, step three. If they can't fix it, we're here to help, right? Now, any content I put on the web, it goes through Grammarly. They have a free version, which I use, but they have a premium version, which does more checks. I used to get that, but I find the free version works pretty good. And then I rarely post it into Hemingway Editor, which is a website, but sometimes I do. It's This is really, I, I would not put any content on the web. It's so far superior to uh, these spell checkers and word processors. I would always do that. And so what you need to do at the beginning here is you need to do about one piece of content for week per week, just to, till you build up some for three or four months. I mean, if you only can afford to do it once every two once every two weeks, then of course that's all you can do. But it's going to take you a lot longer to get all this stuff off the ground. And if you can't do it, you could hire somebody overseas on Fiverr. But a lot of those people just don't write. It's it's you know native use English isn't their native language, and they just make articles long to make them long. And you certainly don't want to do that. But that's and then you can you know after a few months you can go down to once every couple weeks for a couple months. Then one, once a month is a good thing. So. You don't have any schema, so what schema is, if I search for a uh, pizza recipe, see how these ratings show up? This is because they've enter, uh, implemented rating schema. You want that to do, do that because it makes the, the link more enticing to click on. Also, if you search for, a, let's, I think ADT has it, this card over here, if you had schema implemented, you could... Do, it would do this. It would show your company logo, your phone number, where you're located, your social profiles and stuff like that. So it makes your company look a lot more professional. There's WordPress plugins that can do a lot of this for you. Um, and um, you just ha this is also a ranking signal that you have to do this kind of stuff, right? And even after you implement it, I have websites that implemented this a year ago and it's still not here. So what I should explain what 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 schema is. So a web page has content on it that Google figures out, you know, this is, you know, the text on it. Schema gives context to what it is. So the reason I should have not jumped right into, jumped out of the recipe example. So this, what this is, these, uh, these websites, well, if you ever see like pizza recipe, step one, buy bread, step two, make your sauce, whatever, whatever, whatever. That's because these websites have recipe schema. So that not only is it have the text which Google can index on, like if whatever you're searching for. I was hoping I could find one, but it tells Google that this web page is a recipe, right? Or if you go and let me, let me show you some other. So obviously you don't have pizza. This this is how it's relevant to you. So simply say if an ADT have schema implemented, you do not. So this is organizational schema, which is the, your main page, right? This is what your main how, basically how your main page should be, be configured. So this is for simply safe. So you can see this is the company name. It's an organization. It's not a person, right? Here's the URL. Here's the social websites. That's how it knows to appear on the on the right. Here's the phone number, um, the customer service phone number. And you know, Google can maybe fix. It probably can figure a lot of this stuff out its own. But it, it there's no reason not to help Google along. And so this is product schema. And you don't have the product. We'll get to the, the products on your website. So this is a home security knock system that simply saves sales. So you can see here they have product schema. And th this helps when you're selling something. This helps Google put it up, well, I guess, right here. This kind of stuff. Those might just be reviews. But you know, like in Google, Google Shopping, this helps it, this helps it get into these places because so Google understands what it is. So you need to implement this kind of stuff. So this is just an example of what the product schema for this, you know, it's a type product. Here's the name, here's the image, and not all of these are, I mean, you should have the brand filled in, of course. They don't, this is kind of a bad example because they don't have the description, but this is what schema looks like, right? And you can see the actual schema stuff over here, but it's not altogether important because it, if it shows up here, then it's implemented correctly over here. But let me see if I can, if it, see, look, OG title, Simply Safe Home Security. So that's for the organization. Um, Okay, I'm not going to get this is a lot of these things are huge topics that you know you just have to hire a schema expert or want something and I'm by no means a schema expert but I know how to you know get around. 
Um, so meta descriptions, those are the little snippets that appear under your search results. We'll get into that. So web page performance, I don't want to get much into that, but your web page loads in under 1.2 seconds. Let me just show you this though. And it's because you don't have a lot on your page, but if you implement like live chat and things that I'm going to talk about, things might slow down. So you can see here on web page test, your page loaded in 3.15 seconds. Now anything over 12 is horrible. Anything under, I would say eight is reasonable. Anything under five is good, and anything under three is really good. So you're right on that edge, but it's really, really good. You don't pay attention to these things as much, as much, and it doesn't look like you're caching static content, which would help you out. But considering it loads so quick, you don't want to put a lot of effort into figuring that out. But let me just show you what kind of like this is a waterfall chart. This is very important to people who do this stuff. So you can see you have a stair stepping pattern which is good. If you had a vertical pattern, that means a lot of stuff is loading and not finishing. You have a stair step pattern, which is good. So this is an image here and you can see this light purple is when it gets there. And this is waiting, 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 waiting. The dark purple is when it's loading. And generally an image shouldn't take a second to download. And we're, but since I, I don't want to get into too much deep detail here because your website is loading quickly, but you can see if you do the film strip, You want it to paint rather quickly. So at zero seconds, nothing, nothing, nothing. The last time I did it, it started painting at 1.5 seconds, but it starts showing the user something. You want to have this generally at least before three seconds, which you do, and then it loads rather quickly after that because you have nothing else. Not a lot of dynamic content loading, which is good if you can get away with it. Um, don't get hung up. Let me, let me do this. Like GT metrics. See, look how this is loaded in 1.3 seconds. A lot of people get hung up on these scores here, but the bottom line, you want to look at fully load time. That's the biggest thing. See, your website's really small. The average website on the web is about three meg, so you're good. But as, as you grow it, you're going to want to pay attention to all this stuff. So what I do, I, have, I use some, a tool called Inspectlet, which is free for 50 sessions a day. What it is, um, you just put a little JavaScript on your website and it's really cool because the problem is, when I do stuff on my website, it looks fine to me, but maybe it won't look good to somebody, you know, on a Macintosh using Safari or something. So what it is, this actually, you can see how people are using your website. So not only does it, you, it's good because you can find broken stuff, it's good because you can see if people are clicking the back button a lot on something, you know that it's not good content. So that's them looking at my website. That's not my mouse moving. So you can see what they're reading, what's engaging. And if something's not engaging, you need to change it up. Now you can do it at two times the speed, which is what I generally do. You can do it at eight times the speed, which is way too fast for me. But you can see if people are spending a lot of time reading a piece of content, like this guy's very detailed, you'd be surprised a lot of people, they blow right through stuff. Are you, uh, let me see. So you can see they're using Chrome. They came from Google. So now these one sec, if you have a lot of one seconds, your, your web page isn't loading probably that good and you need to find out why. But if you, a lot of people just click the back button really quick and that's, that's fine. So you can see, is it illegal to keep found, found money? So let's do, let's see what he's looking at. Let's well, see a lot of people for my type of thing, they just scan through stuff. And if they click on anything, you'll see it over here. So that's the idea behind that. Now you can get into heat maps and all that stuff. I find them to be rather useless, but some people like them. And now the other thing I do, I do user Bob once a month for all my websites, websites. I spend $20 for 21 minute sessions. So what it is, it's the same concept as Inspectlet. However, you can say, okay, and you can do five minute sessions or whatever, but you have to pay more. You can say, okay, um, I want you to, what's the first impression of my website? Or you can say, you know, go to, how would you buy product X? and then show me how you would do it. Now, the beauty of it is not only do you see them navigating, but they talk out loud as they're doing it. So it's very, it's invaluable, especially for new websites that I'm working with people on. You can find people say, man, I really don't like this here. Or this looks, I don't, or they can say, man, I, I don't know where to go find a product. So it's so cheap and it's, I do it once a month and it's just, it's just great. Now back to the inspectlet. I only spend 30 minutes or so on this a week, like on Friday or Thursday. Sometimes I'll go and watch a handful of these and make sure things are okay. You don't have to spend two hours on, you don't have to watch all 50 sessions. And now browser link, this allows you to do it yourself. You can emulate internet explorer version 10 and see what your web or whatever, what your website looks, looks like. And you can do it on your own. So let's get into screaming frog. Um, So these are your internal links and they all look pretty good. Well, let me, what was the first thing I did? Where did it go? 
and this means is it indexable or not indexable by Google? These are, um, you need to look into these, why they're not indexable and they're getting a client error on your contact page. Um, so that's generally maybe the web page was timing out just for that one session. So you need to look into all that. That must have been what I was talking about. So, and you can sort, you know, you can sort by non indexable. So this is a tool that costs $150. Um, it's something I would buy. It's not too terribly expensive, or at least when you start out and see client error, whatever. Um, do that. Insecure content. So basically, this means these are pages going to HTTP. Now they're being this one's being redirected to HTTPS, and that's not that big of a deal. But there's no reason not to just HTTPS it, and you can use. Um, better search and replace WordPress plugin and say anything that's HTTP redirect to HTTPS. Now, the reason you want to do that is if they go to HTTP, that takes, you know, a second, then they redirect and that takes another second. So it's slowing your web page down. And as we know, performance is a big ranking signal. So just go take care of those. Not a huge deal. Most places uh, do have those. Most websites do have those. Um, redirects. Oh, yeah, so some of these aren't indexed. You need to look into that. So you do have some redirects. I would just go take care of all these. There's no reason for it to have to... And some of these are external, which not, that doesn't really affect you. But um, you can see your... Um, I wish I could move this. Okay, I can't move this down here. Okay, yeah, so... But basically just look into your redirects. Um, I, I put that in the wrong place. Um, broken links, you want to make sure you don't have any broken links, so you can come here, you can go to 404, and these are all broken links. And you would see, if I could click on this button, this in link button down here, you could find out the page that this link is broken on, so you need to go take care of all that. And these, these are ranking signals, right? If you have a thousand broken links, Google's going to pe not penalize you, but it's going to put you lower down in the rankings. I mean, like I said, that's one ranking signal, right? So I got this, what did I have this? Oh, blog at the bottom. Oh, the link to the blog on this page is broken down here. You just can't have this. You can't have this. Uh, meta description. So th these are the snippets, snippets underneath the Google search results. Y they need to be under 160 char characters. If not, they truncate. Um, not a huge deal, but you don't want to have dot, 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 dot. You want to summarize it in 160 words. The problem is you don't have meta descriptions at all. And so Google's going to figure out for you what to put on this page here. You want to you want to put it yourself. So you need to go implement meta descriptions for all that. And WordPress, you know, you could just use Yoast. Titles, you don't want to have titles over 65 characters because those will truncate as well. Um, you can see here, you can sort here and you can go to title length. And you don't have a lot, right? So you have these two. Not a huge deal. People still might click on it, but there's no reason that you should have it. I mean, these are not that difficult things to fix. Then con most of your content isn't really, I mean, I like the stories, but... I don't think people are searching for that kind of stuff. And the, and the articles are real short. So images, generally, you want to be under 100K. You do have quite, and this because this slows down loading time. You can see here. So if you go to here, I can't get on my, I wish I could move this. Let me see, can I do this? Okay. On the con, So this image is a family graphic. So let me show you how I do. Okay, so that's the picture on the contact us page. I have a web plugin called image info. Oh, no, what am I doing? That's my font ninja. You don't want to do that. You right click on it. Oh, it's not going to show me because it's a background. But basically, there's no reason. I mean, again, these are just all big topics. So that's the image. So this is a link to the image itself. Basically, if it's if the web page is displaying it smaller than it is, you just want to resize it down. But what you also want to do, you don't need it to be the highest quality. So what I do, you do this. And I mean, you can use any product you want to use paint.net because it's simple. And let's say the website is, is displaying it smaller. You just want to go here and just, just change it to whatever the website's displaying it as. And then you also want to make sure all your, some people use PNGs. I think they're, I can't tell the difference and they're so big. So you call this family graphic. And you want your images to show what be, the, ha, have a file name of what actually they are. So I would say, you know, I mean, this wasn't in that big of a deal. It's more for products that are specific to you. And that is because Google Images is a under untapped um, 
way to get links. So if somebody searched for your product and found it in Google Images, if they click it, it's going to click through to your website. So you save it. You can see here, it's almost a mag. And it's so let's pay attention to the quality of her down here, kind of in her lips and her nose. If you go down to 50, and remember, it's one meg. It looks, it looks, let me see. It looks the same to me. So just doing that could cut it in half. And a lot of these actually go down a lot further. Some Generally, if you go to about 30, it's okay too. And that's down to, that's still a big image. I don't know why it's not going all the way down. Generally, these go down a lot further to like 70K or something. But 500K is still bigger than, not better than 900K. So you'd want to do that. Um, and then you save it and re-upload it to whatever web, to whatever, to whatever web page that's on, right? Uh, we're going to blow through a lot more of this other stuff. Cause I mean, what do I have? 12 pages of things. It's just so much. Um, and your alt tags need to be this for the same reason. File names need to describe now social media. You don't use it. Is it really that, that good? I mean, you have little like mems and stuff, which is cool. And that, that's good. But you, I would look for things that are bu buzzing. Uh, what's getting buzz. Um, so you could search for like, you want to know what your competitors are doing. That's working, right? And I would follow their followers because if you send them a follow request, you're hoping they'd follow you back. So I would do Twitter, ADT, people, are they doing, and there's just not a lot of buzz around ADT tweets, right? But if there is, just what are they doing? What, what are people got retweeted once? Okay, this has three people responding to it. So what I would do, I would go and find out all the people that retweeted it and I would, so you definitely want to follow here, the people that are active on the tweets, but you also just want to follow the followers of your competition or like, you know, famous people in your industry, right? Now, another thing I would actually def definitely do is like home auto, you know, security system. See what people are talking about security system. And then you want to do it near you. I mean, for other stuff, you can do that, but near you is cool. Then you can see, are people saying, oh, I just got a new security system. So this person already has one, but somebody, may, you can, don't get your system from a cable. Oh, this is perfect. Don't get it from a security system. Then you can write, we are so much better than cable companies, security systems, or ADT has many dealer programs, or hey, give us a shot or whatever. So you need to know what people are talking about and get involved in social media. It's dumb these days. It's, I shouldn't say dumb. it's not effective just to have social media anymore. You need to actually get into it. And you know, this, and this will also increase brand awareness, right? Um, so what I do here, I got a couple links. It goes out saying that home security is important to every family. Here are the best wireless. Okay, so I'd reach out to this person and say, look, I, this is a really good review. Could you add our, this is our product. Could you add our product? Can you kindly do a review our product and put it on your page? And then Houston's another thing that you could, uh, that's a good hashtag. Home automation Houston. So maybe go, go in the Houston hashtag and see what people are talking about. And so you, why you want to do it, you know, near me, these are people near you that are talking that you could possibly sell to. And you could do, you know, security systems, you could do whatever. And it's the only thing I could think of something trending to you guys that might have, and I just couldn't think of anything. I'm sure you could that are relevant to you would be, did somebody just get robbed? You could kind of go and get into those hashtags. Um, follow your competition, obviously. Follow them just, and then you, you know, siphon their leaders off. I do like that you have appointment scheduling as Facebook. That's good. You do want to do competitive analysis, which you need to read here. I can't get into all this stuff. That's a multi-day topic, right? Um, so why does your, Home, you're on your web page, and this is not a huge deal. And also your favicon, it's see, it's kind of the G's coming off the edge. I would just have it in A, no big deal. But this Facebook, it goes to, if you highlight it, it goes to the bottom. Your Facebook ID slash ref equals settings. I don't know what that means, but you probably just want to take care of that. I don't think it's affecting anything. You need a sitemap. Sitemaps give Google an end uh, a map of what's on your site right now it can it eventually figures out what's on your site but you just want to give it a roadmap of what is on your site so you can see here on my blog these are my posts these are my pages so you go post and this tells Google 
okay, these are all the posts. So it gives it a roadmap on how to figure things out, right? And I can't get into all these details. You don't, you don't have one at all. Definitely need that. And you don't want to see what Google sees. Okay, so if you want to see what pages Google is, if you just kind of want to see what pages Google is sees for your website, you can do site, then your domain. Whoops. Okay, that still worked. Generally, I just do, this is called a Google dork. Enter, and you can see, this is where I found that one page that I think was sample content. You can go here. The, this is what Google has indexed. Just go through these and make sure all of these are relevant. And you can see your metadata here. Look how bad it is. You wanted to say, hey, these are great products, blah, blah, blah. So you're not giving people a reason to click on things in your in, in, uh, um, in Google search results. And you don't want to index the categories, you know, and you don't want to index the pages like page one, page two. So you need to get rid of that. Um, on this page, and I'm going to send you these notes. The, the page, it says alarm panels, which is lowercase. You just need it to be consistent. Now, like I said, a lot of these, the, uh, the, the this as a whole will all make a huge difference. So like I said, you need to start with low, home automation for ed, elderly Conroe, budget home automation systems Conroe, whatever. Now you need to get backlinks as we talked about. Now all of your, your main competitors have thousands you have five so you have a lot of room to grow so i mean if all things were the same they're going to outrank, outrank you because they have thousands of backlinks so you need to do this is competitive you, you need to see what ads your customers are running let me see if i have this up now ahrefs is 150 dollars a month now of course it's very expensive so what you want to do you can just use it for a free trial and then dump it all to a spreadsheet okay going on so you can actually see what ads your competitors are running so if you go to ADT and then of course you want to advertise for ADT so you appear before the ADT website and they're doing it to you okay I don't know why this isn't working but you can definitely see what ads are running. You can see what's working, what's not working. I just don't have time. It's a whole other topic. You can read about how to do it here. Um, more on that. And I can't show you. You can see what backlinks are going to what social media on ADD.com, what, 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 what links from social media are going to the certain pieces of content on that page. That means it's working. Find out what's going on. See if you can interact with people. You need to go to Google and type in your competitors, see what's showing up. If there's a web page that you can also get mentioned on, reach out to those people. Um, are they reviews? You know, plug your stuff. Message form, same thing. Here's a template for doing all of it. Um, check the backlinks in Ahrefs. I wish this would work. It's such a good tool. That's disappointing to me. But from there, you can also see all the all the links coming into this website, right? And see if you can, if you can, a lot of times you can reach out to them and say, hey, we have a better article on what you're writing about. Can you at least mention our product on, on, in that article? Or, you know, you can just see where you need to know this stuff. And um, it, it might, there might be a review. Or, uh, it, these are just huge topics. You, you, you just have to understand and you have to find out those backlinks and you need to go to the, the, those websites that are linking to your competitors and see how if there's anything you can do to get a link back to you because backlinks are such a big ranking signal um so you okay so a way to get backlinks there's all kinds of queries you can do right keyword top 10 resources for home security um and this will list a bunch of searches and then you can hopefully get added to that um so this is a huge list um you know, home security podcast, then reach out to those podcasts. And I get into this just briefly. You're an expert, you know, they're always looking for content. Can they, you know, you want to promote your product. Is, can you become a guest on their podcast? Um, then also like, you know, um, home security directory, Conroe business directory. Um, so I did this. So I searched for Conroe, Texas business directory. Are you in all these business directories? I doubt it. And no, nobody ever may click on your website in these directories, but it's backlinks at a minimum. Um, oh, 
home automation directory. These are all, look at this, smart home directory. These aren't even specific to your geographic location, but somebody may come here that's moving to your location and they want to know of good smart home companies in Conroe or in Houston. I would do a lot in Houston. I think Houston's near it, right? And so, the, 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 you know, these are just examples of things you could type. Home automation blogs. Find out what people are blogging about. This is a good place to get content ideas too. Get in the comments. Um, see if you can guest post. Like you can see, I think I have a link. Guest post is huge. You can write, these people are always looking for content. Guest post on these things and get a link back to your website. So look at this. So I did this. I think I did this. What is this? Okay. Let me go back here. So if you type guest post, these are blogs looking for people to guest post. Today's blog post is Controls Beta Program Manager Matt Sand on how to control how Control 4 has changed my life. Well, that's actually on their own website, I guess, but you need to reach out to blogs related to your industry and guest post on them. If possible, you know. Can you be a Wikipedia reference for anything related to your industry? Um, just do a web search on your keywords. Find out what, what's showing up. What can you do to, you know, what's 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 Best smart home devices for 2009. Reach out to the author of this. Generally on Twitter is a good way to get hold of these people. Um, look at this. Email them too. That's a really, actually email is probably better. I saw your article on best smart home automation devices. We have a really cool device. Is there where you could add it to your list or maybe the next time you do it? You know, we'll even send you a demo. We'll even send you a free one to test out. People are always getting reviews for people sending them their products and they test it out for an honest review, right? Um, now here's the problem with domain age. This is how long your domains existed. And again, there's nothing you can do about this, but you need to be aware of it because this is a ranking signal. Look, Simply Safe has been around for 13 years, 22, you've been around for two years. So every day that goes by, your domain is going to get trusted more and more, but you are, you know, it's going to be hard to, you, you, there's not much you can do about that signal. I would definitely have a video hello on your homepage because yours is more Texas based and I would take advantage of that. You know, I would have a bunch of stuff saying like, don't mess with Texas or like sell a branded more Texy stuff. You know, what? why people are so proud to be Texans. I grew up in Texas. I understand that. But if you, it's kind of like USAA, they kind of target military people. And I don't really like that because they're kind of trying to fool people into thinking they're a military organization, which they aren't. So that kind of rubs me the wrong way. But I think if somebody's, if somebody from Texas, who's very proud of Texas and you have a giant Texas logo as the background on your website, I think they're going to be more prone to buy from you guys. Also have, you need to have videos on your products, how to use them, demos, um, installing them, everything. But I want to see what you guys look like. I want it to be more personable. People, it's kind of like you're taking advantage of glitches in human psychology. This is how marketing works. You know, I definitely know a lot about digital marketing, so I understand a lot about this stuff. I'm not good at like traditional marketing, but you want to take advantages of human glitches in the psychology. And this is, it establishes trust. Just, no, if you do a video, welcome to our company. This, you know, here's a little over, on the homepage, right? The owner or whoever it is. And, even though that person doesn't know you, that establishes some bond of trust and familiarity. Definitely want to do this stuff. Um, your SSL cert, and also, what are your, like, this again, this builds trust. It establishes trust. I would do a virtual tour of your offices. Your SSL cert's about to expire in early 2020. I would make, just to make sure you're aware of that. Definitely put testimonials and people, again, co company logos establish trust. Now, I don't know if you've worked with any huge companies, but this is the kind of stuff that, look, if you work with Google or Disney or Target, this tells me this company is legit. Now, even if you don't have these big clients, big customers, there's anything. It just establishes trust. If you'd work with a little, you know, uh, uh, auto garage, something, you know, just be, and then have case studies and, have, you know, ask if you can post the case studies to your homepage. The testimonials are huge. Customer photos. What is this? Oh, see, and, and their Yelp entry. Oh, these customer photos in your Yelp entry. Why not put these on your website? People want to see what it looks like. You could also have like a well, I'll get into this. So you just can't you get get the idea. It needs to be more interactive. What is ADT doing here? I get, I do so much stuff. I forget why I'm putting these things in. Look at these. This oh god, it's so good. Wall Street Journal, Mashable, USA Today. I mean, who doesn't trust those? Put case studies on front. Absolutely. You need to have YouTube videos, man. So 
Look at this stuff, dude. We're just gonna do... You know, like, this is how to install this product. Uh, ideas, and this isn't gonna, you know, you get a look at this, Smart Home Solver, and Pure Heat, that's a backlink, 800,000 views, and I would reach out to these people that, like, this guy probably does a lot of reviews, or maybe Rick Buck does, go, hey, if you if you please do a review for our product, we'll send you a free, you know, we'll send it to you, and you can use it for however, however long you want to. In this to. video, Oops. I'm gonna be going... So, I mean, there's just all kinds of stuff. You can do videos on installing, you can do videos on troubleshooting, you can do demos, you can do all kinds of stuff, right? Um, so these are just some ideas. A gift guide, that would be awesome. Like, top 20, 20 smart home gift ideas for 2020. And then do it every year. And then people love the word secrets, hacks. Do anything on secrets. Top, you know, um, uh, anything. Um, yeah, so that's good. Watermark your images. That's just because if somebody shares your image, they want to know, you want to, they want to know, you want people to know where it came from. You don't, you don't have the e-commerce section set up, which you have to have, but you definitely want to have free shipping. You definitely want to have a lowest price guarantee, even though most people don't take advantage of it. And you need to take PayPal. Most, a lot of people navigate away if something doesn't take PayPal, as I do, and it's a one-time setup. You need to have, definitely have press releases. Now, I was working with a company the other day, and I was doing some research on something, and there was a press release by one of their competitors because they enabled a button on their website, right? <laughs> which is ridiculous. But the point is it gives you backlinks. And I, you know, just have anything, you know, uh, uh, company signs contract with, you know, Joe's garage or whatever. But the point is n nobody really reads these things, but it's going to build backlinks. Harrow's a really good thing for you. Hire, help a reporter out. See, these are, look at this. So CNN.com site, these are articles on CNN.com that have home automation in them. So you can see, oh, I think I have another link here. So this was a CNN article about home automation, and they got an expert to help contribute to the article. Wife of Jeff Hagen's co-founder of Smart Things. You want to you want to help people out with these articles, and how you do this is help a reporter out. Is a website where people journalists are writing articles on the time. You must source. You just get, get you know you'll get an alert if somebody's writing an article on um, doing a. Um, um, an article on smart home systems or whatever they're called. You reach out and say, I can help you out. And you help write the article, you get it, and you get a huge backlink from a very high authority website like Yahoo News or CNET or something. Um, so that's really awesome. Um, Twitter Rich Card, you don't have it set up. So if I share your anything from... Okay, was it loading? Okay, it didn't work. Oh, and so this is what it should like when you share something on Twitter. I don't know. The link there is wrong. It should have the image. It should have the text underneath it. And this is, you don't have this. If anybody shares a link to your website, it's just going to be a, a link. You, this is Twitter rich cards. You need to have that set up. Now, ads on Facebook, they're great. Now, for somebody like you, you would want it. You can target based on demographics and interests. You would target like high tech people or security people or whatever. You know more about your, your customer base. And then any, and then you want to boost posts, any content that's really good. And as people comment on it, you want to invite them to your homepage. They might like it, but you need to invite them to your homepage. So what is this? And I grew my Twitter following to about a thousand people if then within a few months. By doing, I should have said, using the follow back strategy I mentioned earlier. And I, I could probably be at 10,000 now if I just did it more. Used, used to be able to automate it, but Twitter's changed our API up. Okay, so I also sell like movie replica things. And this is, I had a post for Own an Everlasting Gobstopper. And you can see here, my audience was people had an interest in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory or Willy Wonka. Now, I didn't sell much with that ad, but you get the idea. And consider advertising on Reddit and Core, of course. It's a bunch of local creative market ideas looking into that. It's like a guerrilla marketing, cheap stuff. Um, so this is huge right here. Um, you want to advertise for your customer names, right? This is this is a really effective way of advertising. So Simply Safe. So look look what comes if somebody searches for Simply Safe, Brink's home security comes up first as an ad. This is a way to siphon links from your from your competition. Cover Smart comes up first. Um, 
And you, you just try and see if it works. You could do an ad for $5 a day. Do it for a week, and if it works, that's great. If it doesn't, then you know it doesn't work. You don't have to spend $1,000 on a campaign. So look, I typed in agent security for you guys. Look what pops up first, Simply Safe. <laughs> so they're doing it on you. You want to go do it on them. And then you can use Ahrefs to see what how people are advertising on your website, on Google, 100%. Don't duplicate content. Um, if you have over 10% duplicative content, you want to find, you need to get rid of that. You can go here and check. You need to have live chat would be huge. I mean, live chat is such a big thing. Your competitors are doing it. I'm not comfortable on the phone. Uh, I shouldn't say I'm not comfortable. I don't like doing it. If, a, if I'm looking for something and there's no live chat, a lot of times I'll go look at a competitor's products. And a lot of people don't implement it because they say, well, I don't have somebody that's going to be able to sit by the computer 24 hours a day. You don't have to. Um, it can come to your phone or if I see this is what I was talking to an SEO company the other day I was asking for a discount and it's after a while after 30 seconds we are not online we mail email you back so they may never be online right but they never would I never would have reached out to them if they did not have a live chat so you can never respond to live chat but you can get them this this gets them in the door and they also had a little game that I you could play, which keeps people on your website. I don't want to, I don't, that's a, no big deal. But if it times out, you can start playing a game. It just keeps your people on your website. Um, I just want to show you, I don't remember what this was. Oh, look. Pop-ups are annoying, but they do work. You can, you can, you can configure them by intent, like if it detects somebody's going to hit the, X button, you can pop up with this. And they are annoying, but they do work. Um, or you can say delay for 30 seconds. I, I, I don't like pop-ups right in front of you, but I, w I think it'd be a, a reasonable to have it come in from the bottom right. But if you want to test with it, that's fine. And see how they have live chat. That's just such a big thing these days. Make your phone number clickable. It is at the top, but not at the bottom, I think. I can shop online at Simply Safe, but I can't with you guys. You need you need to get that configured. Now, great free advertising for ADT and Simply Safe are those stickers you put in your yard. You need to do that. I mean, it's just a great free, that's kind of a guerrilla marketing thing. Um, yeah, like I said, you want to, since you're a vet, and thank you for your service, people, vets are more prone to buy from military people. And, and people in Texas are more prone to buy from, te those people that have served in the military in Texas are very proud, rightfully so. And I would incorporate th these um, themes into your website a lot more. Um, okay, this why us section. This is a graphic. This needs to be text so text so Google can index it. I'm not sure what your hamburger menu does. So if you go here, so this is your, your top menu here, which is these. Oh, these customer, this needs to be text, your customer views. And you don't need to bear, you don't want to bury your customer views where nobody sees them. Look at this. You click the menu and then just this pops up and it disappears over here. So that needs to go away. Like this could be clickable here. Oh, it does go there. I think it's at the bottom. It's not clickable, but no huge deal. You need more. Oh, and your media specs and your product specs. This is a big deal, like huge deal. Even if you're not selling anything and you're just listing the product, Google can't. Maybe it can. It's getting better at OCR. You, this is not being indexed here, this text. You need to have that as, as text, right? And it even looks tacky. It looks kind of pixelated and looks like something that would be scanned. So that needs that. That's huge. Um, and then I would use videos to like show off your stuff, right? And then put them on YouTube, of course, then embed them. I want to see one in action. Um, like I, you saw the green team webcam, you know what I mean? Like show maybe people in your office doing stuff. That's just kind of, these are just cool things. It makes things more personable. Um, and I want to see like, let's say you have it, one of your cameras installed at work. This is what it actually looks like. You know, this is what the quality looks like. So it's, it's just a demo and that's just, people love that stuff. Um, Oh, your automation, you need to get that taken care of. There's nothing there. You don't want to have an under construction page. It's probably a signal to Google that things aren't totally up. Your, your reviews on your homepage look bad. I discussed that. Make it text. Um, oh, your home advisor logos. Those are good logos. Like I talked about logos. Can you link to your home advisor? I don't know. Can you link to your home advisor page? Like right here, 
do that if possible. And that's those are external links too, right? So killing two birds with one stone. You need to be in Google My Business, Yelp, better all your directories like we talked about above, and everything needs to be consistent. And you need to respond to all reviews. And you looks like you are in Google. I don't think you were doing it negative or positive. Google has said reviews and consistency across the citation listing. So across Yahoo Business, Google My Business, Yelp, Foursquare are, is a huge ranking factor. So look down here. This is kind of a cool thing that Simply Safe has. It shows the review, their Google reviews. Um, oh, on your Yelp listing, it goes to a different domain, like, like Conroe, which is not good, even though it looks like it. So, so what, I think it's a landing page, right? But you want to have that landing page on your domain. There's no reason not to have it on your domain. See right here? And it has your logo up here, but that, okay. Yeah, so you, you don't want to have another domain. That's just, there's no reason to have that. Because you get the link juice from it. Um, for about it, this is a generic thing. Those work really well. Look into that. Now, you, you need to, everybody that leaves as a happy customer, you need to ask them a review and you need to make it as easy as possible. So here, what is this? It asks for, so, okay, so th th these reviews should not be buried. You need to put them on the front page. And look, this is where you you can review us here. If you go to Google, there's, th there's nothing that comes up that shows easily where they, where they do the, like where they do the review at. You need to make links directly to your reviews, right? Like, so, it, so you can see here, you can make a link. So when they load the page, it goes directly to here. And you need to do that for Yelp. You need to do that with Google. And you can buy a domain like ag.to slash Google. That goes to the Google review, ag-20 to Yelp. And then you need to give that to a card to everybody, right? And maybe offer a discount or something because those are huge ranking signals for Google has said that. Um, and these are how you can do them. I thought I had. How you can do them for all the different websites. So you want to look at that. Why are these buried? That's your reviews. Those should not be buried. You need to be in Google Merchant Center for selling products. So they appear in the Google Shopping. Okay, just you know, this is another thing. Podcast. They're always looking for content. These podcast people. There's a ton of content podcasts on smart home stuff. Um, whatever, whatever. You need to ask if you can. You know, can you be? A, you know, you'd like to talk about whatever topic. Maybe your products, and you know, try to just be. A, just they're just always looking for people. Google Analytics. Um, there is, this is a good article. This this is just shows you how, what people are doing on your site, where they're coming from, statistics. This is how you can use Google Analytics to help know what's going on in your website. It's a really good article. Do that. This is a huge topic. Um, you need to be check Google Search Console. This is like a, a, a dashboard for Google's index of your website. You need to see the keywords that are working. You need to see pe um, if your site map submitted, which yours is not. You would get a, you would get an email alert about that. You need to make sure that you're not getting dinged for anything. You need to be in Google Search Console. Absolutely. Even though Google would figure out your website, um, you need to be in. Make sure you're in Bing. And if you submit to Bing, it's also going to submit to Yahoo and DuckDuckGo. And you need to be in international search engines. And you may not understand why, but the thought is. If somebody in Russia is searching, comes across your page, one of your blog posts, they may not buy anything from you, but it's a little bit, it's one more, pe that's one more visit to your website and you get one more visit. That's a signal to Google that you're legitimate. And again, hopefully you'll show up higher when somebody searches on something they're willing, wanting to buy. You can look at this here. Your favorite con looks chopped. I did that. Pop-ups do work, but they are very annoying. And there's, you know, a pretty big debate amongst people if you should use them. But I think it is reasonable to have them pop in and don't cover the in. See, look, this is okay. I, and that's okay. It doesn't cover the whole screen. And you know, it, it, they, they do work. That's the terrible part of it, you know, so. Um, your contact form is, needs to be less generic. I don't, I'm not sure what that even means to be perfectly honest with you. Oh, it has a, I would like to see, I don't know why I put this, but your, your website in general is very generic. It needs to be more personable. I'm not sure why I put that in there. And I want to get this done fairly quickly. Check for broken links. Use a plugin. If broken links kill you. There's a WordPress plugin that'll do it monthly or daily and it'll send you a link. Now, okay, it's been over an hour. So this is taking a while. You, the way, only way to keep up with all this SEO stuff, well, I mean, you, 
not the only way, but the only way I can do it. SEO Roundtable is great. They have a daily newsletter. It summarizes the daily news from SEO stuff from different websites, from, you know, Google people. I would highly subscribe, sub, subscribing to their free email list and just spend five minutes a day reading over what's going on. You definitely want to follow the official Google account, Google Webmasters account, and the John Moo Twitter account. And I actually get mobile alerts for these so they don't get lost in my Twitter feed. This is like the lead search guy at, at um, Google. So I have an awesome spreadsheet tracker which I can share with you. Actually, there's a link at the bottom of this. So you can see here on 920, my website was the 8 millionth most popular website on similar web. And you can see that, so you can see it's getting better, 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 and better. And I used, I used to do this once a week. Then I got down to once a month. Now I'm doing once every two months. So you just want to make sure the trends are going white. This is how many site map it, it, entries I have. If this halted and you're posting content, there's a problem. You need to know about this. So this also detects problems. How many clicks I'm getting. Um, how, Bing site maps, my directory authority, my GT metric score. So if my GT metric score is about 95, if it goes down to 55 one month, you know something's happening. So these are just trends, right? You just need to make sure you're aware of trends. So this actually is useful. A lot of the reports you get from these SEO tool companies don't are not very useful. This is very useful. You can click here and get it. So hour, 10 minutes, we knocked it out. Hopefully this helps. Feel free to ask me any questions. Have a good day.